Hello firearms friends, Joel Colander here for Rock Island Auction Company. You know, when I make these videos for our sporting and collector firearms auctions, I like to find either sort of a diamond in the rough, whether that be for something that's really, really fascinating you might not normally find or think about, or something that's just a tremendous value. Now you've seen this in a couple of them. We just did a video on the Savage 1907 and 45 ACP, which I personally think is uh, a rare gun at a tremendous value. We made one for our last sporting and collector auction about a Colt Patterson that was a value. Today, of course, even at, at this distance, you're probably able to see this is not an unknown gun at all, but it does satisfy that second requirement of a tremendous value. This, of course, is a Colt Walker and it's in our February 14th through 17th Sporting and Collector Firearms Auction. That's over 7,300 guns in just four days. Now you might ask yourself, whoa, what is a Colt Walker doing in a Sporting and Collector Auction? Why isn't it in one of the premier auctions? Our premier auctions, after all, are three times a year and we hold these world-class firearms events. They're, they're kind of the king of the collecting world and walkers are arguably some of the, the top guns in the field of firearms collecting. In fact, two of the top 11 guns ever sold at Rock Island Auction Company are Colt Walkers. Uh, one was sold for 1.84 million. That was a civilian Walker, the Danish Sea Captain Walker. And one at uh, 1.035 million was E Company 120, the last military Walker ever produced. Very, very special guns, high value. So what's this one doing in a sporting collector auction? Well, we'll get there, firearms friends. Do, do you have patience? Let's go over just not the whole history of the Walker, which is amazing and rich and fascinating, but but the Reader Digest version, the Cliff Notes. Um, Colt Walkers, as our president Kevin Hogan is fond of saying, gave Colt the keys to the mint. And did they ever? His Patterson company had failed. Walkers were the first successful military contract he was able to get. That's uh, 1,000 for the military contract and 100 for the civilian market, meaning there's 1,100 of these ever produced. Uh, they are the first Colts ever produced under the Colt name. Uh, they're incredibly important as far as whether you're a Colt collector, whether you're a collector of American firearms, uh, they're just laden with American history. They're laden with Texas history. Um, as America expands west and expands her borders to the south, to the west, all sorts of reasons to love a Colt Walker. Now, when we say they had a role expanding the country to the south and to the west, that is because they are famously shipped to the 1st Regiment of Texas Mounted, Mounted Volunteers uh, to specifically uh, Jack Coffee Hayes and what would become known as his Texas Rangers. Um, these were used in combat. These were used in the Mexican-American War um, against Native Americans at the time, against Native Mexicans at the time they were used. And these were the peak of firearms technology. Uh, keep in mind the Patterson is really the first revolver at the time and it was small and it was finicky and not very hardy. And then you come up with this monster pistol. Uh, powerful, very hardy. Of course not prone from malfunction as it was shown in the hands of novice troops, uh, but a definite improvement over the Patterson. If you're not a fan of the Texas Rangers in the 1840s, you haven't read enough about them. Their exploits and their tales of combat as relayed in letters and who they were, these are not, you know, your, your buttoned up troops in their nice uniforms. These are wild, grisly men armed to the teeth, charging full cavalry into, you know, much larger superior forces of, of Mexicans and Native Americans, fearless, incredible stories. So you have, the Ranger history, you have American history, you have Colt history. Of the 1,100 that were ever produced, there's about 160 uh, estimated to still survive today. Very, very few. You get the idea of why these are kind of collecting royalty. Now this is C Company 10. And we're gonna go into why that's special. They sold them in, in companies, uh, they issued them in pairs. C Company were the first produced by Colt and they were the first shipped. C Company 10, you're talking within the first dozen of Colt firearms, not only that, that were shipped to Hayes and the Texas Rangers, we're talking about the first dozen Colts ever produced. C Company 10 is the first shipment to Jack Coffee Hayes. Now, if you compare that to a similar genre of collecting Colt 1911s, first shipment Colt 1911s, those first 200, you see the value increase quite a bit. 
uh, so to have not only a walker, which are collectible in any condition because they were used so hard uh, in Texas and in Mexico, now you have one of the first dozen ever, ever produced. Absolutely incredible. Of C Company in particular, so you have 1,100 and then you have 160 left known to surviving. Of C Company in particular, there are 38 thought to survive. And that's when Whittington wrote his book um, on the Colt Walkers and it's, a, it's an excellent resource. Now here's the really fun part. All that history, all those collecting strengths that we just related to you. And this is still, this is not a seven figure Colt Walker. It is not even a six figure Colt Walker. The official pre-auction estimate for Colt Walker C Company number 10, early production is 65 to $90,000. The first question is probably on everybody's mind, well, why? And it's because there are things on this walker that you would not want on a pristine walker. And hence why this walker is in our, one of our sporting collector auctions and not one of our premier firearms auctions. Uh, first of all, some of the markings have been re-engraved. We cover all this, of course, in depth in our description. We're not here to misrepresent this revolver in any way. It stands on its own. This is a genuine Colt Walker. We wish to be nothing more than completely honest about this. And some of those markings have been recut. You can see towards the barrel that there are, is a darkening here, indicative of a weld. Now, we believe this to be when there was a uh, loading lever retention put on here, perhaps that from a Dragoon and welded and since removed, perhaps the same time as these markings are cut to restore it to its original condition. We've had the barrel x-rayed. This hasn't been cut. It hasn't been stretched. The x-ray is included with the firearm. That's how serious we are about making sure these things are right. We uh, will have a firearm x-rayed for you. And last but not least, we mentioned then the parade of walkers it was cited is the oldest known walker with all matching serialized parts. That is indeed true. Uh, that, however, doesn't mean that they're all original parts. There are replacement parts, loading lever, uh, notably, and a few others that are, again, detailed in the description. So not a perfect walker, but my goodness, if you've been dying to add a walker to your collection and there's just no way to add one for seven figures or six figures, here comes one in the five figure market. It's a heck of an entry for C Company 110, early shipped, and it is a genuine Colt Walker, uh, a cornerstone of collecting, a king of firearms collecting. And when you put it in your hands and you read the story of Jack Hayes and the Rangers, you know why these are so high on the list of not just Colt collectors, but American firearms collectors, people who collect memorabilia of the Texas Rangers, and everybody in between. It's a tremendous value in that February 14th through 17th Sporting Collector Firearms Auction. The full listing you can find at rockislandauction.com. This is the top dog in the auction, but there are thousands, just over 7,300 guns in that auction for you to check out and place your bids online. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, keep your powder dry.